All right, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening at what time ever it is that you are joining us on Real Talk with PJ. And um, wow, I have been having the time of my life this season just being able to see how our medicine and God seem to agree on a lot of things. Being a church girl for a very long time, I used to think that God was on one planet and medicine was on the other planet. And then I'm finding out now that actually it's like God originated this. And so we've been talking about reproduction. Just generally, let me just say reproduction, assisted reproduction. And we have in the house an expert. We've had him for a couple of weeks. And his name is Dr. Kenneth Eguda, who is an IVF specialist. He is a consultant gynecologist and a reproductive biologist. I heard that in one word or one sentence for the first time in my life after talking with him. And he's been such a blessing to us, being able to bring it together for someone to know that God and medicine, you know, play a role. And I just want to, I won't call it a digression, uh, but I, I just want to say, you know, as a pastor, uh, my own covering in ministry, that is my own father in the Lord, is also a medical doctor married to another medical doctor. So I have a passion for medicine. I think that if I didn't, read mass communication i probably would have read medicine because i feel it, i just don't like blood though i don't like seeing blood so i don't know how those would have worked but um dr kenneth aguda has been with us and he's been such a blessing we have all kinds of people coming um writing comments and i need to read more of your comments i need to read everything that is in your heart so i want to say dr kenneth aguda i won't say welcome to the show it's like we are co-hosts right now because you've been here for a bit thank you though for your time I know you work really hard, but then you've suspended a whole lot to just be here and give us knowledge and give us understanding. And that tells me how passionate you are about bringing the truth to the world. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, when we stopped in our last edition, we were talking about how food uh, plays a role in infertility, not being able to have children. And, you know, everything has a cause, Dr. Ken. Everything has what caused it right i know sometimes in medicine maybe other aspects of medicine some doctors would say this is a disease or something we see that we don't know the cause that they don't know don't necessarily mean that there is no cause now i never knew i never knew except from our last episode when you mentioned it that obesity can play a role in infertility because i was morbidly obese at the, I became obese at the age of 28 or 29. And I carried that for more than 10 years. I was At the time that I knew this has to end, I was 130 kilograms. I, was, I, I used to call myself a moving house. My arm was 18 inches. When the tailor came one time to take measurement, my, my arm was the same size as my daughter's lap. That tells you... That that's dangerous right there. So I knew I was supposed to have surgery to remove my kneecap to replace it with metal. Because my feet couldn't carry my body. So I began to try and I, I'm in ministry. I'm supposed to stand. I stand on my feet. Not supposed to. I stand on my feet to preach. I don't want to say I'm preached from a wheelchair. But I was panting and I sing also. And I figured out that when I go to a certain pitch, it just, I lose breath and all of that. So I knew that I had to shed the weight. And I had to tell myself the truth. People say, I don't really eat much. I don't know the reason why I'm fat. And don't call me fat. Just say I'm big. <laughs> Guys, plus size. Yeah. <laughs> or just say I'm chubby. Plus, plus People get offended when you say you're fat. Okay, so I had to sit down after uh, some, uh, an incident which I would not want to mention. But somebody insulted me. And I, I went back to my hotel room and I cried and cried and cried. But then I, I got up, I sat down and I spoke to myself. Listen, what this person said is true. You're fat. Yeah. If you don't tell yourself the truth, the biggest liar is the one who lies to himself. Tell yourself the truth. Go find out what's your BMI. 
If you're overweight, you're overweight. If you're underweight, you're underweight. Tell yourself the truth. You can't seek help if you're lying to yourself. And denial is not the same thing as faith. You've got to know that. Faith defies. Faith doesn't deny. So I knew I was morbidly obese. And I knew that I needed to help, to get help. And I admitted to myself, my favorite food was rice and stew. You know, I grew up broke. We ate rice only at Christmas. So when I made money and could buy my own rice, I would eat rice in the morning, mid-morning, late morning, lunch, <laughs> a late early brunch, the other one, the other one. I would eat rice in every form. Jollof form, soaked form, dried form, uh, rice, rice, and rice. Two form, whatever. If it was rice, I would eat it. And I was adding weight. <laughs> and you know in Africa, our dressing doesn't help us either. Yeah. Yeah, so every day you, you don't buy ready to wear. You go and make. So every time I go to the tailor, they take new measurements and they make. So I was constantly making clothes and didn't even know I was putting on that weight. I didn't get out of bed in the morning. I rolled out of bed. And for the sake of the ministry, one day when all that happened, and the Lord said to me, I was waiting for you to get to this point because I can't even use you. Because when you, you destroy your body, your spirit will leave your body. And God will not do anything about it. So I began to look into what I eat. Now you can go and have a biatric surgery and all that. What does that do? It just reduces your stomach so you eat less. That's just it. So it's all the food. If you, if you can stop eating that much, then you don't need the surgery. Right? So when you say that fertility can be affected buy food ding, 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 ding. it rang in my head so i need you to talk about that i really do because christians i tell you the truth are the most indisciplined set of people when it comes to food yeah oh, well, it's very good oh, well i'm glad you've shared all the weights and you <laughs> thank if, you if you don't actually mention it right now mm. Uh, nobody knows that um, you've uh, acquired such weight I and did. you've shared the weight. I did. You know, that was a very good work. Thank and you. I think that must be a, a great discipline yes. to emulate. Thank you. And uh, oh well, thank God for all that. Thank you. Uh, food plays a very important role mm -hmm. um, in fertility. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the kind of food you eat mm -hmm. and the kind of lifestyle generally. Mm -hmm you know, affects uh, the ease with which you get pregnant, mm -hmm. the ease with which you take pregnancy to a logical end. Oh, okay. Yes, it affects fertility and let me say it affects reproduction. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, our observation these days from clinical medicine is that um, the rate at which we find kids with obesity and young girls with polycystic ovaries it's higher than we used to know you know these are conditions that um, makes women unable to produce or ovulate monthly and any condition that affects ovulation monthly affects the ease or the speed with which a woman gets pregnant okay what causes obesity it's calories to a large extent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Calories to a large extent cause obesity. Mm -hmm. So how do I mean when I say food affects fertility? Yes, sir. Obesity affects fertility. Yes, sir. Food causes obesity. Yes, sir. And uh, obesity affects the gamut formation. Okay. Be it a man or a woman. Okay. You know, uh, mm -hmm. this revelation was quite telling. That was back then, 2013, 2014. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was doing my studies at uh, University of Warwick mm -hmm. Center for Human Reproduction. Okay. In fact, that was my uh, that that was my paper. Whoa. You know, that was my paper. Okay. Obesity and fertility. Okay. You know, observation then was uh, uh, the genetic material that forms the egg. Mm. The, the 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 my mitotic spindles become too many. 
you know, you may I, I don't know which how else to explain what my totic yeah, spindles you, yes, are, spindle, you know. Somebody's but, sewing something. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well somebody's knitting something. <laughs> you oh know, my god, it's not it's not well knitted. Yeah, you have a lot of them. Yes. In the eggs. Uh -huh. And so the eggs are genetically abnormal. Well. That's if you're just obese with or without polycystic ovaries. Okay. And that means that the, the fertility or reproductive potentials of mm. the eggs mm. or the oocytes are reduced. Just because this person is obese. Is obese. And just because this person just can't zip their mouth. Ex well, I think so. Yeah. And if it is related to polycystic ovaries, yes. for instance, and uh, if you're privileged to be a doctor in my category mm -hmm. who sees all kinds of women with reproductive issues, mm -hmm. and you have these categories with polycystic ovaries, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have polycystic ovaries in, 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 I mean, in grades. We have four different types of polycystic ovaries, for okay. instance. Mm -hmm. And that is one major disease that affects women in reproductive age. Okay. And your pattern of eating and the kind of food you eat yes. worsens, contributes, or uh, cost it. Uh -huh. In this case now, you, a woman does not ovulate regularly. Mm -hmm. She doesn't see her menses monthly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes she can go three, four months or even six months mm -hmm. before seeing menses. Mm -hmm. So that way, because uh, this causes hormones to be uh, abnormal or mm -hmm. imbalanced, mm -hmm. so the process of egg development mm -hmm. becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. Yes, some people are genetically predisposed to it, okay. then the lifestyle accentuates it. So all we're saying is that there is an abnormal feeding habit okay. so, so somewhere say, around when it. When you say some, some people are genetically predisposed to it and then the feeding accentuates it, you're saying that there's something in their gene that says they're going to be obese. They're, going to, they're, they're likely to be bigger. And then they're likely to have a polycystic ovaries. Okay. okay. You, they inherited it from their lineage. Okay. You understand? Okay. So then the character, the behavior, the, yeah. the feeding habits, yes. you know, uh, encourages it. Yes. Makes and it so bigger. when you get to a point that you're treating them, mm -hmm. one of the modalities of treatment is lifestyle modification. Yeah. Because with the obesity or with polycystic ovary associated yes. with obesity, yes. they are not able to ovulate yes. or they don't have good eggs. Yeah. Or they don't even have eggs because uh, this may be related to some kind of condition we call empty follicle syndrome. It's a kind of condition that a woman has a shell mm -hmm. that has the egg, mm -hmm. but the egg, the shell is empty. It has no egg in it. Oh. You know, polycystic ovary predisposes or causes that is one of the causes. You have a lot of egg shells, but you don't have eggs when you do the retrieval of the eggs. Whoa. You understand? So feeding has a lot to do with this. Excessive feeding of carbo on carbohydrate, and that is why when, when, when we get to counseling mm -hmm. before this kind of treatment, mm -hmm. we put them off carbohydrate mm -hmm. and give them a lot of green ve vegetables mm -hmm. or a lot of uh, food with, 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 with low carbohydrate, mm -hmm. high proteins, mm -hmm. and uh, fast them off food. You mm -hmm. know, so that they could shed the weight. Fasting, fasting. So they could shed the weight. The same thing happens to the man. You know, that affects the, the process of sperm production. Fat yeah. men too. Can oh yeah. Be. Oh yeah. Because people, it's, it's one of the people same think problem. that it's okay for men to be fat though. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know, women. Yeah. yeah. Come on, if I yeah. people think you know, if a dude is fat, no, no worries. Like it's the if the women are the ones that don't want the fat because they want to wear clothes. Mm. Like it's all about dressing and it's not about even the health. Mm. So, so there's one thing I hate though. Yeah. I do not like seeing pot-bellied men. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they say it's a sign of good living. Oh, yeah. But no. can that affect fertility, though? It does affect or fertility. Or it can affect the kind of child you give birth to, if it, I it, get you It correctly. affects fertility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it affects fertility. It affects your ability to uh, reproduce. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that much it does. You know, the child uh, is a product of whatever comes. If he's mm -hmm. genetically predisposed to be obese and he fits the behavior with abnormal feeding habits, mm -hmm. then of course he may acquire mm -hmm. or he may get obese. Mm -hmm. I mean, as he grows. Yes. So uh, what we're saying is that uh, obesity mm -hmm. or abnormal eating causing mm -hmm. obesity mm -hmm. has a bearing 
on not just reproduction, yes. but on health oh, no. generally. Yeah. You know, a woman can actually be pregnant, can get pregnant easily when she is obese. Mm -hmm. But then managing the pregnancy is a lot more it's difficult. It's a lot more difficult. And the complications she could have when she's obese carrying pregnancy yeah. is a whole lot. On her heart? And you spend it on the heart. Uh -huh. At least on I the, know that much. Oh, yeah, on the heart. Uh -huh. And on the health of the baby, too, because See? obesity is detrimental to pregnancy, whether to the mother's health or to the baby's health. You know, I, I have never seen where fat is, where being obese is good. No, obesity is, an, is a disease. I don't know what is the benefit. Mm. Even, even in your buying fabric, people can do two yards. You have to do six. <laughs> like, for real. It, there's nothing profitable. I've, I've been in both worlds, and I do not just like being fat. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing good about being obese. Yes. Because uh, it makes life generally uncomfortable for everyone. I was, I was going to travel to South Africa. I was going to say Pastor Ken. Well, Pastor Ken. Dr. I was going Ken. to that. <laughs> I was going to travel to South Africa. And I, I walked into the plane. And then this lady said, where is your medical um, clearance to come into the plane as a pregnant woman? And I said, I'm not pregnant. She said, I'm not kidding you, Sam. Because my belly was all the way out there. And then, you know, I would lie to myself and say, well, it's because I have given birth to children. This or that. Now, only you born. Only you born picking. And I, I, was, I was carrying this weight on my heart and all of that. And at the end of the day, I had to come to the place where I told myself the truth. And, you know, when you said something, you, you, you talked about fasting, right? I follow uh, someone called Dr. Jason Fung, and he is a Canadian professor, deal, me medical doctor who deals with uh, people who have diabetes. And he is telling the whole world that you can be cured of diabetes from fasting. And he has all kinds of patients that he has proof of. You understand? So when you say that there is nothing good in obesity, somebody might think you're taking it to the extreme. Maybe because, oh, he's a doctor, so he's just saying, you know. But I'm saying that this man, you can check him online. His name is Dr. Jason Fung. Uh, Jason, as in Jason, the way you spell it in English, then the Fung is F U N G. And he is, um, he's, he does something with liver. I don't know what you call them, but people's liver. And then he treats people that are diabetic. And he began to find out how fasting can work. And you know, all of the religions talk about you going off food at a certain period of time. You understand? Christianity talks about fasting. And you know, you wouldn't even know that it, God is probably asking you to stay off food to cleanse your system. Just do, just cleanse it. But then you see, I know... Sometimes when you guys want to treat somebody of something, you say, don't eat. When you're coming maybe to take the blood or to take something, you say, don't eat, right? Because yeah. maybe the food would interfere with what you are supposed to see. People, zip it. Zip it. When you are addicted to food, you are addicted to it. It affects even now you're hearing how you can have children. And men who are pot-bellied. I don't know whether it comes from alcohol, it comes from whatever. It's just not right. You don't look good. You can't even smell good. Yeah. You can't even smell good. It's no good. There's no good in obesity. And we're hearing now that if you're obese, it can affect you having children. And I just feel that when people do not want discipline, you follow because discipline is where it all starts and ends when it comes to food some people say I, I i will just pray god is going to help me when satan came to tempt jesus mm -hmm. he said if thou be the son of god yeah. command these stones to become bread and jesus wasn't led into the wilderness to fast he was led into the wilderness 
Matthew 4, he was led to be tempted of the devil. And so when the devil came to tempt him, the first temptation was on food. In other words, if Jesus had failed, because he was hungry, 40 days no food, you will be hungry. If he had failed on that, what knows, who knows what would have happened to the story of salvation? And so there are families, you know, from what you're telling us, that probably don't have children and someone is obese in the family. They, there may be a plethora of other factors, but then this issue of food is playing a major role and so somebody doesn't want to talk about it. I know people. I'm not saying I'm guessing. I know people who wake up in the morning to pound their yam. Yeah, you know, um, when you get to the issue, I mean, the, I mean, cases of reproduction. Mm -hmm. You know, these days we work a lot, a lot of stress in the world. Mm -hmm. Women are undergoing a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. Men are doing a lot of stressful things, mm -hmm. and the lifestyle is not even helping. Mm -hmm. You know. One major, uh, the garment to get from the men, mm -hmm. it's the sperms. Yes. Today, because of lifestyle, mm -hmm. you have uh, a whole lot of men, mm -hmm. you know, of different age groups, mm -hmm. with what we call uh, oxidative stress. Oh. You know, uh, we have uh, uh, oxidative radicals in the mm -hmm. human bodies, you know, that are produced because of stress. And you have a lot of men going through assisted production technology with their partners. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, because now you, mm -hmm. they have it on record that you have done a sperm analysis mm -hmm. and uh, the sperm is okay and the man feels there's just no problem. Mm -hmm. But then he doesn't know that the lifestyle, poor eating, yes. a lot of stress, yes. alcohol, mm -hmm. smoking, which are all lifestyle, mm -hmm. affects the sperm's health. So you could have 20 million sperms. But they're not healthy. But they're not healthy. It's like you're having 20 million sick babies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because what we call the, the DNA, the genetic material in the head of the sperms, disintegrates when you, are on, when you undergo a lot of stress or when you have a very poor eating habit. So what do they need in that condition? Yes. They need a blend of healthy meal. What I'm saying is that when you want to undergo assisted production technology, call it IVF, call it uh, uh, ovulation induction and timed intercourse, or even uh, intrauterine insemination, and uh, you need a, a modification of lifestyle. You need a lot of vegetables, green vegetables, or whatever kind of vegetable it is that's prevalent in your locality and be eaten in the near normal form that they should be eating. Should I say natural form? Yes, not overcooked. Exactly. Who, who would have known that we you, were you talking understand? about having babies and talking about vegetables? It's very important because you have a, this massive count of sperms with all damaged DNAs and are good enough for nothing than to waste money and not achieving your result in assisted reduction technology. So Eating of, only yeah, 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 the yeah. right food. Yes. Vegetables a lot, yeah. less of carbohydrates, yeah. you know, good number, good amount of protein and a lot of green vegetables. Uh -huh. They mop up these oxidants from the body and make not just the sperms healthy, uh -huh. Uh -huh. but the entire human cells healthy. And then the DNA of the sperms could get enhanced mm -hmm. because fragmentation is going to be less. Mm -hmm. And then you have a better chance mm -hmm. of achieving success with assisted reproduction technology. Absolutely. This also happened to the eggs of the woman because oxidative stress affect gametes all across, whether the male gamete or the female gamete. So eating habits, healthy eating habits, mm -hmm. avoidance of cigarettes, smoke, or whatever kind of smoking and substance it, 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 it is, mm -hmm. and avoiding drinking, mm -hmm. and even coffee. Okay. Yeah, and even coffee. Mm -hmm. All this should be minimized or avoided okay. if you're embarking okay. on the journey for assisted production technology so you could achieve so you success see, when, with when, ease. When people say sometimes, when people say, because um, after we started to talk about this, you know, and we've been talking about this for a bit, after we started talking about this, I've had people who call and say, but I did the IVF and then it failed. I did it twice and then it failed, three times and then it failed. So if, if I hear you well, what you're saying is, not just um you're, you're not saying only the food but it can be a reason why ivf will fail definitely if you are not living the kind of lifestyle mm -hmm. that will help have very good egg 
or very good um, sperm, then even when we do the IVF, don't come out as nothing because your lifestyle has already killed what you're presenting to us because it's what you give to us that we're putting back in your system. And if what you're giving is already messed up, then what can we do about oh, yeah. it? And the world today lives on processed food. You barely have people, because you said something about eating it next to natural. That means that it's not, then how is processed food you know, anywhere near uh, natural? In 2014 in yes. Munich, yes. there was a, a study done in Munich, mm -hmm. natural food, people were divided in groups, a cohort mm -hmm. divided in groups, some eating food next to natural, mm -hmm. then the next cohort mm -hmm. eating processed food. Mm -hmm. Fertility treatment was, was, was carried was done, mm -hmm. and uh, it was observed that those on the natural arm of food mm -hmm. had more success than those eating the processed food. So eating the even Lord food you, close to natural to uh, natural form, you know, uh, guarantees more success. All things being equal in assisted production technology, so food mm -hmm. has a huge bearing, you know. And incidentally. Uh, we don't talk so much about food. IVF or assisted production technology, it's a field that details should be given to everything Absolutely. that affects the human Absolutely. body. And recently, my observation is uh, even the makeup that women apply, yeah. Yeah. you know, affect them. Because anything you rub on your skin, for instance, is, is absorbed. absorbed into the blood. And you have uh, what we call uh, endocrine destructor factors embedded in these, uh, in these uh, substances that we apply in the name of body cream, body lotion, or makeups and all that. And uh, they are poison to the, uh, to the endocrine system. It's okay. And then they affect the, 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 the quality of gametes and reduce your chance of getting pregnant. So in other words... Let me make it a little bit tougher for you. Oh, Lord. <laughs> it's tough already. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Fertility keeps going down because of a lot of things that we consume. Uh -huh. You will even observe that eating food in plastic plates causes infertility. Okay. Eating hot food in plastic plates causes infertility because these plastics are deposited in the food that we eat. And you eat them. And uh, so glass plates better. Gla yes, ceramic plates. Ceramic. Ceramic plates. Yay! Better. We glass <laughs> plates, okay. That's what we use, right? You know, and then let's take it a little bit deeper for those who believe in polluting water bodies. Then they the drink plastic, plastic oh drinks word, and, and, the discard, right and discard the, 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 the plastic in, yeah. the, in, the, in the water bodies, in the yeah. rivers, in the yeah. ocean. Yeah. These fishes eat them. And these are substances that are not degraded. And yeah, then we eat them from the fish. Yeah. And that is why you see the, the world reproductive potential is gradually declining. So even if you escape it from home, as long as you eat fish, yeah, you, you, could, may. You, you may have eaten it in fish. And that is why it should Child. be a collaborative effort. Humans, nature, government, and all organizations joining force together to reduce all these pollutants one way or the other. Because, you know, it's been, uh, uh, should I say, uh, estimated or is being propounded that even the male generation may be extinct years to come. Well, they said seven women are going to come after one man. Scripture said that's going to happen because that's how you, I mean, we're saying it like, <laughs> did you, you, that's what he's saying, right? That's what he's saying. Yes, because... That the male gender yes, getting because, extinct. Because what was considered normal for male before with respect to production of sperm has been changed from 20 million which is several years ago to 15 million now i don't know whether 10 million in a few years to come would be considered abnormal until we get to a point that the sperms the quantity of sperms that men have can no longer make a woman pregnant by sleeping with her and so now the assisted production technology that the world has rejected and has messed up might be the only may, way. may be the only option of achieving pregnancy. There, as I speak with you right now, there are a lot of population or communities in the world today that have been damaged by natural disasters or uh, chemicals and all that, that to a large extent, the options they have of fertility is just assisted production technology. So a whole lot need to be put in place to make us achieve uh, all this. As a matter of fact, I have young kids, a, a, a boy and a girl, I make sure they don't eat in plastic plates. All because, yeah, 
I just think you about know, this thing yeah, because that's you, just my profession. You, yes, absolutely. You can have that knowledge and then just throw it in the way oh, yeah. and go tell people mm -hmm. outside and then in, at home mm -hmm. you live differently. Yeah, that's yeah. not that's that's not the way. Well, you you you've been with us. I mean, you know what? We we this is not ending here because we need all the information we can get. People of God, who would have thought that Alejo has something to do with having a child? Who would have thought? Who would have thought? But we're hearing it now. Wisdom will fill the earth as the water covers the sea. And all of that is coming from God. Because God wants you to be able to live that happy life that you want. Getting married, having healthy children, living a healthy life. That's what God wants you to have. And that's why knowledge has come to us. And I want you to come back again to this channel. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe to it. Press that button that bell button so that when we bring out the next episode you'll be able to know and then the, the number on the screen is the number that you can call to contact dr kenneth eguda if for any reason you need his help medically in any way shape or form thank you so much doctor and we look forward to having you again and again and again and again thank you so much i'll see you sometime thank you